agree that uh, we need to contribute to the progress of the country. Nobody has refused. Mm -hmm. uh, they say death and taxes are the only things that are certain in, in this life. Uh, but you see, it is disingenuous for Soro to threaten us that if we reduce this, we will not have roads. <laughs> Why is he not saying that if we reduce that road maintenance levy, <laughs> the seafood in Gashagua's office will disappear? The travel allowances will disappear. Why ha does it have to be roads? No, but, 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 but that was already done finish. by the even in the let fight. Let me finish. Let me finish. Mm. Osoro, there is something I have explained here on the hierarchy of needs. Uh, if you ask the people who use that road that you are referring to, that goes to my rural home, whether uh, if the, you know, that road has been like that in that state for 30 years, we have not died. <laughs> we can continue living with that road the way it is for as long as we have food in our stomachs. The hierarchy of needs requires that you deal first of all with the basic needs. Food is number one on that pyramid of subsidy. Soil. So you cannot tell us that, oh, uh, if we remove that road maintenance levy, the road maintenance levy is so high, it is removing resources from people's pockets, determining or reducing their ability to buy food for their families. What we want you to do is to uh, uh, prioritize people's ability to feed their families, people's ability to take their children to school. So don't tell us about roads and potholes. Once you are cleared uh, <coughs> this, uh, the pain that you have imposed right now and people are unable to survive, talk to us about the other things. If you explain to Kenyans, you see, uh, the problem with you, I suspect, is that you think Kenyans are fools. Even uh, <laughs> when the president repeats that, oh, Wajinga Walisha Kenya, he, I suspect he knows or he, he believes that there are still some fools. No, 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 you see, you see that, <laughs> let me tell you. Shall no, wait. <laughs> that we can't see when he's trying to be clever and when his government is trying to be clever and when you're trying to be clever. Also, people know what priorities the government should be having. And the things that you are doing are not correct in terms of the prioritization of the problems of, of Kenyans. Just listen to them. Listen to Kenyans and understand that if we are unable to feed our families, we can't do anything else. Stop these stories you're telling us. And uh, one of the biggest observations from these talks, and you should read it there in the newspaper, uh, Trevor, the tragedy for Mamamboga and uh, the Boda Boda person is that they were told they were the ones going to form government. Mm. Right now, the reason these people don't want to do these things is that the real people who formed government are uh, uh, the, the two shareholders, the two main shareholders from Rift Valley and uh, Central, and an institution called the IMF. They never spoke. When Ruto was campaigning, he never mentioned the IMF. <clears throat> Or World Bank. Or World Bank. Those who are not shareholders in this government, it was Mamamboga, Mutua Boda, and uh, <laughs> Wilbaro. the, the Wilbaro pushers. But now we are being told these levies cannot come down because of our commitments with the IMF. Yeah. I am asking myself, what about the commitments mm. that you made to Kenyans? Mm. Where do they rank in the hierarchy of commitments? Should in the commitments you made to your own people that allowed them to put you in office, should in they rank before any other commitments that you've made? Yep. And the commitments you make with... Uh, institutions such as the IMF should be in the best interest of the people. Okay. As I said, you cannot bleed a leech to fatten a, a heifer. The IMF will be okay, even okay. if they don't receive their payment. But what about the people 